Welcome to episode 44 of the Rugged Angel Cast. I'm your host, Camila, and as always, I will be your host. So, this past weekend, or, or this past week, I guess, has been an emotional roller coaster for music lovers. As I'm sure you know, on April 19th, we lost musical genius Prince. Genius seems almost a little too pedestrian of a word to fully describe the person, the musician, the creator that he was. It was very revealing for me to see my entire Facebook timeline turn purple that day and for several days after even. All the different races, creeds, ages, genders, demographics had memories to share about Prince and his music. And um, I was loving all of it. So if you're listening to this on WMCK.FM, I will be playing a few Prince tunes as well as some by his protege or by his, the folks that he, or his protégés. Yes, that's the right word. Yeah. So in his honor. So um, look out for that. And on the flip side, the only artist that was able to pause our Prince tears, our purple Prince tears, was Beyonce, who dropped a seemingly autobiographical visual album on HBO this Sunday and followed that up with her actual album, Lemonade. Now, I have never been a Beyonce stan. I'm not a member of the Beehive, but I do and have enjoyed her music in the past. There's a lot of it that gets me on the dance floor. But this, Lemonade, is something so different, so raw, so powerful that my hat goes off to be and her artistry. Finally, she has found a voice that I can get behind. And if this album is autobiographical, it's not just Beyonce's story. It's the story of all black women. And it's something more than just about a man cheating on you. Listen to it deeply. Listen to it. Read the lyrics. Watch the film. And um, so, of course, I'm going to be playing some tracks from that masterpiece. And shout out to the poet. uh, I hope I'm saying her name properly. Warren Shire. She is the poet that's behind the beautiful spoken words featured in Beyonce's Lemonade film. Now, you can listen to me on WMCK.FM on Wednesdays from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. That's when the brand new shows air. And that show repeats on Thursdays at 5 p.m. and Mondays at 10 a.m. And you can also check out past podcast, uh, past episodes on RuggedAngel.com without the music. And you can let me know if there's music that you want me to play. So you can hit me up on Twitter at the underscore Rugged Angel with the hashtag Rugged Playlist. Pittsburgh, you should make a point to get downtown this Saturday, April 30th, for a night of music and movement in Market Square. Don't miss the last chance to experience the public art piece, mix and match, and a dance party celebrating the kickoff of the 2016 Pittsburgh Marathon. This is hosted by Project Silk, VIA, and the Office of Public Art, as well as Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership. They'll be featuring DJs um, playing music all night, uh, DJ Bamboo, Pandemic Pete, and IJ. It's free and goes from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., and it's all ages. So check out the Office of Public Art Facebook page for more information. This episode is with Kathy Rusher. Aside from her being a very intelligent and um, fun young lady, Kathy is a produ- is the producer for the Three Rivers Screenwriters Conference. This conference is happening. This will be the first time around the first year in Pittsburgh, May 20th to 22nd. If you're a writer, filmmaker, actor, producer, editor, if you love film and or books, you should go. It's going to be a fantastic opportunity to network and learn from some of the industry's best screenwriters, producers, filmmakers, and more. So with this podcast, you will get a chance to learn much more about the conference as well as about Kathy and her upbringing. And, you know, what it's like to be a daughter of a philosopher. If you want it, work for it. It's that simple. Have a great day and let's get into the show. Kathy Rusher, you are on the Rugged Angel podcast. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You're I am welcome. really delighted to be chatting with you today. So yeah, this is going to be fun. <laughs> I can't wait. I've been like, I got really excited about this on the car ride over. <laughs> it's an hour talking about you. Oh my gosh, a whole hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most I've ever talked about myself. Like legitimately talked about myself. I mean, I do it all the time. Uh-huh. I live up to my but name. Just like in one section in like one, one chunk session. of time yeah okay 
I, well, we'll see if we can't make it a little less painful for you. Or I live up to my name, Chatty Cathy, sometimes. So I, I don't think there'll be a problem. But we'll, I'm going to find out here. So I'm going to have to reel you in is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be like, okay, getting off topic. <laughs> How's your day going so far? Good, good. Uh, this should be a very interesting podcast because I've had about an hour and a half of sleep. <laughs> Oh, you poor thing. Yeah, yeah. No, I was up late last night working on the uh, WordPress website for oh. the conference. So oh. um, Cleaning it up, making it look all nice. Exactly. Like Trying to make it look official, like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> 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 Trying. <laughs> That's always the key. It's like, oh, maybe I can fool people. And then they show up, and then you're like, I'm sorry. It was just, it it's was just all smoking, mi- smoking mirrors. Total smoking mirrors. Oh my gosh. You got to fake apologize. it till you make it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's like, it's like sometimes having some, some background in marketing and design helps at the same time. It's like, oh man. Yeah. No, oh. this is going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be a great, great conference. I'm really looking forward to it. Okay. Well, before we get into that, we're going to find out who you are. Oh. Are you from Pittsburgh originally? I am, actually. I grew up in Squirrel Hill. Okay. Well, the first three years of my life were spent in Highland Park. Okay. And then, um, actually, my aunt, uncle, and cousin bought the house that I grew up in until I was three. And really? My parents moved to Squirrel Hill to be closer to St. Edmunds, where my brothers went to school. Okay. And um, I got to go to Ellis because at the time, St. Edmunds was single sex. Oh, really? Yeah. So I got to go there for nursery school, which I loved. Uh-huh. But come kindergarten, they shipped me off to the girls' school. <laughs> so you went to girls' school, all girls' school, all throughout your school I career? went to Ellis from K through 12. I was a lifer. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're telling me. Yeah. They have schools that here that are <laughs> that, that go from K through 12. Yeah, it was like shy of shipping me off to boarding school. It was. Oh you know, my god! Yeah, no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> gotta make sure my parents don't listen to this. <laughs> no, but it's a trip. That's got to be a weird dynamic to have kindergartners in the same building <laughs> so, well, I mean, just... oh actually yeah so they had they had different buildings for the schools so oh, okay. lower schools in one building and then middle schools in another one and then a high school is in a third so but they were all right there on a ca- on the campus, on the campus. It was very very closely connected and okay. so how did yeah. you like going to an all-girls school well you know what it's interesting because i grew up with two brothers older mm-hmm. brothers and then um so you're the baby i'm the only girl yeah, but I'm not spoiled. <laughs> I swear it. I okay. swear it. <laughs> I even swear it on a Bible. Maybe I am not spoiled. So. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so yeah, I am. I am the youngest. I'm the girl. Um, but what happened was, by the time I went to high school, my both of my brothers had been off at college. So I okay. went from being sort of like a three, always having a bunch of other people around to go, he did it. No, he did. It. No, he did. It. No, he did it. To being like, Kathy. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> Kathy. So all eyes doing? are on you. <laughs> all eyes on me. So it was a little strange. Um, but also, I think growing up with boys, uh, my, my dad's an academic. Mm-hmm. He's a professor at Pitt oh. in the philosophy department, and he's been there a very long time. Nice. He still teaches. Um, I'm very proud of him. And I'll, I'll get back to him later on. <laughs> but, but he is a true writer. Um, okay. Yeah, he's very prolific. And he's written something like over 100 books. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Holy cats. I know. And that's just books. So that's not, you know, like yeah, journal just, entries yeah, just, and, and lectures wow. and all sorts of stuff. Articles. So did so. you go to Pitt because he talked Actually, there? I did not. Oh, no, really? I needed to, to escape and fly the coop for a little bit. <laughs> Where did you go? <laughs> I went to a, a small liberal arts college in New Jersey, not Princeton, mm. um, at Drew University. So Drew okay. was kind of interesting. They had a small undergraduate program. A sm- well, they have an undergraduate program and a small grad school, and then also actually a Methodist seminary hmm. that attracted a lot of Korean students. I think hmm. they had a partnership with some Korean church. Really? Out. Yes. So that was kind of cool, having wow. this international campus and community of, of people. Drew was really great at attracting um, students from New Jersey that could have gone to other colleges Mm -hmm. because they had a really good scholarship program went there. So um, that was really, oh, I can hear myself now. (laughs) (laughs) I think I liked it better before. (laughs) Try not to let it throw you. I know, right? I know. I'm like, that's what I sound like. I get it. Wow. So, um, so yeah, so Drew, it was about 50 minutes west of New York City. So that's not bad. It was not bad. But at the same time, there wasn't a whole lot going on in the town of Madison, New Jersey, because the townspeople were like, hey, if you want to do anything, 
Go to the city. Yep, go down the street, go to the city. <laughs> so things closed really early, and then there wasn't a whole lot for the college uh, kids to do. Did you make it into the city a lot? I tried to. Uh, Sundays were really great days to go in because there was free parking. So when I had a car on campus, that would be a nice little trip. And I actually had a friend from middle school whose dad happened to be a pastor ending mm-hmm. up in the Upper West Side pastoring a, a church up there. Okay. And so that was really fun. Um, had I known how much things cost, <laughs> I, I, think I, <laughs> I think I would have been in there like every weekend because um, they had a pretty nice place. That was the, yeah. the one contingency was he had two daughters and he said to the church, I just want to make sure my, my daughters are in a you know, fairly safe place. So, yeah, they put them up in a real nice apartment building with oh. a couple bedrooms, and, and I should have claimed one of them as my own. <laughs> <laughs> regrets, regrets, regrets. But, um, no, that was pretty cool. So that was kind of my um, introduction to, to New York City. Wow. What yeah. did you study at Drew? So I studied anthropology Ooh. Uh-huh, and art history and studio art. That's really interesting. Yeah. What did you want to do with that? What did you want to be when you grew up? Oh. Well, sort of Indiana Jones, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, digging in the dirt and unveiling really cool things, maybe an Egyptologist mm. um, for a while there. But uh, what did I want to be? I want to be many things. I think that's always been my problem. Yeah. I'm sort of a jack of all trades. Master of none. <laughs> not yet. Master, of, master of not yet. <laughs> yes. A lot of creatives have that problem. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So the other thing that I was interested in um, eventually was sort of architecture, I consider being an urban designer. I kind of thought, you know, the anthropology aspect of looking at human civilizations and how they kind of organize themselves, but then also sort of the visual aspect of that in terms of like town planning or city planning and kind of combining those two. Also, um, sort of product design, getting into the field of, you know, analyzing how, looking at how humans use the objects that they do Mm -hmm. and then kind of making them better or making something completely different. Man. So kind of stunning people, but with like a design or, yeah. or, you know, that's, I've always found anthropology very fascinating and I wish that I had paid a little more attention in a couple classes that I took uh, <laughs> in college, but yeah, yeah, it's always very interesting. So how did you end up getting, is you, you made a shift right. at some point <laughs> out I've towards made many shifts actually, <laughs> we'll get into that later. And writing and filmmaking or <laughs> yeah, right? marketing or like, exactly. Uh, so, um, Actually, back to Ellis. Okay. Yeah, back to Ellis. So Ellis has, like, such a strong arts program. Mm -hmm. So from a very early age, I was always exposed to, you know, fine arts and the stage and singing. So you're a performer. Um, Yeah. Well, I always wanted to be a performer, yes. I always wanted to go west. My best friend Candy Curry and I, Mm -hmm. um, we would walk as far west on the playground as we could every day (laughs) at recess. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we didn't get too far. I mean, you know what the funny thing is? The funny thing is, is that you know, where Ellis is situated, you know, we would head toward the Nabisco factory. Okay. okay? But the irony is that, 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 that my dream to go to California, ever since I was a young girl, mm-hmm. California has now come to Pittsburgh. Right. Which is so interesting. So now, you know, Bakery Square houses Google. It's like, who knew? Maybe I was, maybe there's a prophetic Right, child. you had some intuition there. You just didn't know about I will, I will approach California. I will come close to it. Oh, you yes. made it come to you. <laughs> right. I was just drawing that energy in from a very young age <laughs> so you were always you were into the stage and performing and i was i was and my mother um is a huge uh musical fan oh really and she is one of the is was one of the founding board members of then gargaro productions now mm-hmm. pittsburgh musical theater oh, okay and um having been very fortunate of course at the time you know realize how fortunate you are you right. just wake up in another country <laughs> but my dad um as an academic um he would take the whole family over to oxford england to wow. do so he could do research in the summertime there that's awesome yeah he's a honorary fellow of one of the colleges over there so um so every year while all my classmates were at summer camp i got thrown into school <laughs> Because <laughs> in the UK, they're in school until mid-July. Oh. And they didn't want me, you know, hanging out at home, doing nothing all right. day. So. Man. Yep. Off I went uh, to school. How did you, What? Yeah. how was that for you? Well, I think it was, it was quite challenging, actually, because 
you can see me. I'm, I'm a tall individual. I'm right. a bigger individual. I'm the German Polish and these little British kids are skinny and scrawny as heck. And, uh, and you know, so I think people made fun of me. I think they always thought that I was older because oh. I was taller mm -hmm. than I was. So when I'm 13, I look like I'm a 16 year old, oh, and, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So, and when I was 10, I looked like I was 13. So, <laughs> so growing up was a little bit of a challenge, um, a little <laughs> awkward, but uh, but in general, um, in general, it's it's been pretty fantastic because I really have sort of childhood friends over there. I mm. have sort of like a second family, a second life. Oh, that's great. Yeah, over in in England, and um, so it's unfortunate though because I used to spend five years or so five years. I used to spend five months of the year mm -hmm. over in Oxford, and then now it's like I get to go over there maybe if I'm lucky 10 days to two weeks every two Aww. years <laughs> yeah so it's really kind adulthood of... is hard oh, <laughs> adulting's so hard. hard oh I'm so glad to hear you say that I'm like it's not just me <laughs> no it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. you should, like yeah you absolutely you know you and didn't realize it back then you, you totally like how how fortunate you actually were <laughs> exactly and you know at the time I mean I had no idea I didn't mm -hmm. really maybe even sometimes understand what was going on all right. I knew is one day I'm waking up and there's this group of people around me and I'm in this particular house and the next day I'm like <laughs> an overnight flight. I mean, I'm waking up in a different bed, you know. Yeah. Um, now, we had the same – my parents actually ended up purchasing a house because they kept going over there okay. um, frequently. So they got really lucky with a new land development back in the 70s. And okay. no one was interested in purchasing it. So the developers <laughs> contacted my dad and said, hey, are you guys interested? Well, there, was there much of a cultural difference that you needed to get used to? That, and then when you came back to the States that you needed to, <laughs> yes. to re adapt? Step out right yes, now. yeah. Yeah, My cousin used to make fun of me because I'd come back to, to Pittsburgh and I'd be like, would you like to play in my garden? <laughs> and she'd go, backyard, Kathy. It's backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, okay. I mean, I, could, I didn't know, you know, yeah. it's sort of one of those things you're just like, so yeah, so as a, as a kid, I would definitely pick up the dialect. Mm -hmm. and, and now as an adult, you know, it doesn't happen so much, which is why I can tell you Madonna's a phony. <laughs> she is a fake. <laughs> fake. Fake. She does it on purpose. <laughs> Two oh months into God. living in the UK and she's got like this this accent. Yeah, this extremely thick. Like, yeah. yeah. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not nope, buying nope. it. Sorry, Not girlfriend. buying it, Madge. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you've already had, so, you had all that. I had all that, you know, and I, and my mom being in a musical theater, um, would take me to go into London to see shows growing up. So, I mean, my first love was, was definitely sort of acting in the stage and, and that kind of thing. And then, um, you know, video production came a little bit later. I'm going to show my years here. <laughs> I probably Safe didn't. space. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Until it's out there on the internet. <laughs> no whatever <laughs> it's fine it's all good Camila <laughs> um so uh so probably I was in maybe high school when you first got involved mm -hmm. in video production yeah when I first sort of started to um some summer camps in the UK that I got to go to had you know a little video production oh, cool. seminar that you could take mm -hmm. and or session that you could take and so it'd be fun you know, going around and just kind of filming you know what's happening yeah. and around the campsite and <laughs> um and that was kind of like my first introduction to it and but I I still haven't done nearly as much with it as I would like mm -hmm. so it's kind of funny um but eventually fast forward <laughs> you know went to college didn't have time to do much mm. um post-college you're starting your career mm. and um and then I would say I just I just kind of came fell back into it 48-hour film project okay yeah so that was like your reintroduction to it that was pretty much it I said yeah sure I mean I well okay I, I take that back. I did work for a small video production company okay. here in Swissvale oh, okay. at the time. Um, after I graduated from college, I moved back to Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And then after about a year here, um, I worked with Eve Picker, who does downtown, well, not just downtown, but she does real estate develop property development okay. in and around Pittsburgh. 
and quickly found out that maybe sounds really familiar. I think I know, I know of her. You sure do. Uh, <laughs> she owns the shadow, the building, the shadow lounge. There it in. is. There yeah. you go. Okay, and a whole bunch of other ones too. Even yeah. uh, the beauty shop. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of of buildings downtown. And okay. she's amazing. She's amazing. But I think watching Eve kind of get the whole loft development projects, her loft development projects off the ground, and mm-hmm. seeing all the hurdles she would have to jump through and everyone telling her no one's ever going to want to live downtown mm-hmm. no one's going to ever be interested in these lofts this that and the other and of course now we know history Shock. being what it is <laughs> they're building them all over the place yeah all over the place so she was really the the first person to do it wow in pittsburgh and my hat's off to her she's yeah. a strong awesome lady I have so much respect for her um but i think i found pretty quickly that maybe that wasn't quite for me, <laughs> being an urban developer, you know, it involves wearing a lot of different hats, mm. banker. She she had an architecture background, so that really helped, too. Mm. Um, but, man, it was just really um, administrative, a lot of administrative okay. uh, things, and I wanted to be more sort of creative. So um, I said to myself, which seemed very logical at the time, um, I've always wanted to see what it's like to live in the U.K. all year round. Yeah. I have some great friends there, and I think I want to be a graphic designer because – you know, it seems like something you can pick up and you can do wherever. Mm-hmm. I'm a visual person. There are a lot of graphic design firms in England and London. I'll just move there and I'll, I'll find my, you know, a place that will, I can, where I can be an intern and yeah. they can teach me and I can kind of work my way up. And anyway, what happened is I got there and even in London, they wanted someone with two, three years experience. Even or interns. I know. Or the <laughs> secretary receptionist. Mm. So um, I attempt for several months i was there i think eight months mm. and um and temped around and london's very expensive even just to kind of get up and get yeah. somewhere the underground is not cheap yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so i thought after pounding the pavement for a while i was kind of like what am i doing and it was over winter so i'm oh. like what am i doing to myself so you know just as it started to turn nice in may i i packed it in and, and came back to <laughs> pittsburgh Thinking that maybe I would regroup and go back. But then actually in Pittsburgh, I sort of found what I was looking for in London. Mm-hmm. I I found a, some folks who were starting a sort of startup out of CMU, two females who were opening up a graphic design firm in the Strip District. Oh, okay. So I worked for them for a little bit. And I also um, found a small position at this studio here in, in Swissvale that I don't think exists anymore. Mm-hmm. But... Um, but through a friend of mine, they said, sure, we could use some help. And so so I think that was, again, my sort of reintroduction into the video production world okay. and sort of seeing how, you know, the editing suite works. Mm-hmm. And then how they would they would be sort of give me little projects to do from time to time. Like, oh. hey, Kathy, okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take these clips and put them together and add some sound to it. And, okay, you know, go off and do a little project. Okay, now we really need to do some real work. You need to make all these dubs. <laughs> you know, like, but every now and then I got to be creative, and, and, and that was pretty cool. What I, I know you are a writer, but is that the is that the area that you prefer to be in? Well, Or do you just so, kind of like getting involved in everything? Yeah, I'm actually, I don't consider myself to be a writer. Why? Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> primarily because I actually haven't really written anything. Okay. Um, would mm. be the number, but I actually. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but it's but it's funny because, you know, I'm, I'm putting on the screenwriters conference, so obviously it would make sense. Hey, she's a screenwriter. Mm. Um, I actually, again, back to the 48-hour film project, I found really quickly, I see myself more, first of all, I'll just say, I see myself more as a producer director. Okay. So I produced and directed a 48 hour film project mm. and I had a co-producer with me and I, and he said, Hey, your job, stay up all night with the writers. You're not expected to write. You mm. don't have to write. Just stay up. Keep them on track. Keep them <laughs> on track. Keep these guys on track and guys and gals on track. So that's what I tried to do. And it was like pulling teeth. It was so, oh, so, <laughs> so anyway. Um, I think the writing process is probably the hardest, the most difficult in the 48 hour film project. Because at, at some point, especially if you have too many people involved in it. And then at some point, everybody gets loopy. Yep. And then it starts to come yeah. like, what if we did this? Ah. And then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, 
I don't know. That's that doesn't sound so great, really. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll pretend like it is. Right. <laughs> it can make you feel good because we don't want you to walk up and leave. Because right. <laughs> we won't have a crew. <laughs> oh, I know. So so I, I literally stayed up all night, came up with sort of two different script ideas. I went to Kinko's, got copies for the whole cast and crew, and by the time I arrived on set, and of course I had emailed my co-producer the, the two scripts, but, but by the time I arrived on set to meet everybody, they were like, yeah, we're not doing this. <laughs> so we literally... Like yeah, holding stacks yeah, of scripts. Yes, exactly. <laughs> holding like reams of paper, and and here this guy is like, no, we're not doing it. And then um, I learned I learned a lot of things that weekend. I really did. I feel like I aged seven years in a weekend. <laughs> but... Um, but I learned that it really it all starts with a script, mm. and if you don't have a good script, you're just going to waste everybody's time and talent, energy, effort, money. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, so then I kind of vowed that I was going to read a couple books and educate myself. But I never really saw myself as a writer. I definitely saw myself more as okay. I just want to be. I, I want to be a good director. So right. I need to know what makes for a good script. Right. And, so that, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. And so just from that standpoint, and, and or I should say, even if you just want to be a good producer, mm-hmm. or let's say you're somebody who really wants to have a good career, even if it's just doing sound or lighting, right. I mean, don't you want to know what makes her a good project? Yeah, exactly. I think it, it would behoove everyone if involved in the film industry, video industry, to learn something about, do some research about all the jobs that are involved. because. Absolutely. Otherwise, you don't. If you're building a team, you don't know if you got a good person. If you don't know what makes for good lighting or Absolutely. for good acting, so yeah, I got to do a uh, sound, a uh, little bit of sound on a small indie film, and I loved it. Really? Oh, I loved it. I can't wait to get old and have an earpiece. I'm like, give it to me. I'm like, first I want to like eavesdrop some conversations. I'm like, and but like, yeah, it's great. Like you're walking down like this like gravel dirt road, and you're hearing like. Like sounds you've never heard before, like you know, like like bees and insects and oh, it was I mean, birds. It was just amazing. I'm like, yeah, give me that earpiece. I'll take it. I'll take it now. Amplify it all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah. So you uh, started. So the Three Rivers Screenwriting Conference. Yeah. So I started. I I started reading books, and I was down in Austin, Texas, for a South by Southwest. And then I heard, um, and I was going at South by, I was doing everything I was doing. I was doing tech and I was doing film and mm. I was doing music. So okay. yeah, I was like, nah. it. yeah, you're here. yeah, I'm going to go big, go home. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do everything as much as I can. And like, I remember the first couple of years just running all over the place and running all over town, just getting pedicabs or like running from A to Z to try and make it in time for as much as I could, could do. Um, my energy level from I can like trace my energy level from like in my thirties from like <laughs> from like going to South by Southwest over the years and how much energy I have and, and the, like the number of like sessions and things I would do right. it diminished greatly from like you know like like thirty to thirty three maybe you know? uh, oh my god it's, it just hasn't been the same since it's still a lot <laughs> yeah yeah so anyway so I was down there and then I heard about the Austin Film Festival and how the Austin Film Festival is un- unique because they have a four-day screenwriters conference as part of the festival Mm -hmm. and so i looked into it and i was like well you know i austin in march is really nice it's like 70 degrees it's not too hot and then you know october when the austin film festival is that's also kind of like the perfect sweet spot for for austin (laughs) which is why everyone wants to move there right (laughs) because they all go to south by or aff and then it's great yeah it's perfect you haven't been there in august then huh right (laughs) exactly when you like walk off you know you walk outside and you just start sweating and profusely yeah it's um it's a very surprising effect (laughs) yeah (laughs) i know i couldn't take it Uh, austin has one too many strikes against it it's like the heat the bugs the uh, bugs are ridiculous and um allergies yeah huge allergy capital yeah um so i'm like oh and the sun so i'm like well sorry austin i love you so much i'll come visit you in march and october when i can (laughs) you know (laughs) when the budget allows I'll, i'll try to get down there but yeah so i've been i went down there and i really found my community Mm. like it was great um found your tribe 
Yes, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And so the first year I was really fortunate. Um, I met, I befriended these two people and they kind of introduced me to everyone. I'm partying with like Larry Kasdan and Fantastic. Yeah, it was just, I mean, I, I didn't even know who some of these people were mm. cause I'm, I'm not really, you know, in, I don't right. consider myself in the industry. I'm, you know, so, so I'm just like, Oh, and, and screenwriters are kind of like the geeks, you know, right. of the film industry. Nobody knows what they look like right. or who they are. And yet they've worked with it everybody i know and most of them like it that everybody. way to just kind of keep a low key low profile <laughs> um they have a lot of respect you know mm -hmm. in that in that industry and um so it was kind of cool and and then these guys get to come together and they're all swapping stories and sharing stories <laughs> and it's like a big reunion so you know some of these really huge producer director types will fly into austin i probably shouldn't be telling too many people this i don't want you know i'm like don't, don't ruin my good time people All right exactly stay away stay away <laughs> not another south by no <laughs> um yeah so uh but i gotta be careful what I, what I say but um but in any case it, it was great and then one year i mean my budget just couldn't afford it i couldn't i couldn't make it down there and i was you know getting texts and calls where are you we miss you you should be here and, then, and i sort of vowed you know never again i it's just Tapping into a creative community mm -hmm. is so inspiring and rejuvenating. And, and every year I go and I'm like, oh, I, I haven't written my screenplay. I said I was going to write my screenplay this year and I didn't do it. I'm such a loser. And, you know, you get down there and everyone's like, so are you a writer? Are you a writer? And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. And they're like, no, you are. You just you are a writer. You just have to claim it. But the funny thing is, so I was going down there, and I was, I was the first couple of years, I, was, I think I was more in the indie filmmaking track. I was learning about, um, this is when like crowdsourcing was just getting mm. going. So I was, I was trying to, again, better be a better producer, better director, right. indie filmmaker. Um, you know, how do, I, how do I do this thing mm -hmm. called you know, making a short film right. or making an independent film. And so that was the kind of hat that I was wearing. And then subsequent years after that, every year, it kind of just started shifting where I was like, oh, and I started getting ideas, mm. you know, and I'm like, well, you know, I, oh, I had, I met friends down there and they were all writing and directing and producing their own shorts. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, heck, I think I could do that. I think I got a couple <laughs> stories in me, you know, I used to do creative writing and mm -hmm. Ellis has a really strong, um, again, you know, English program, arts mm -hmm. program. So everyone senior year was mandatory to do the AP English okay. class. So again, I have, a, and going to liberal arts college and anthropology, I had to write, write a lot of papers, but yeah. the creative writing is something I, I did in high school, but I didn't do a lot, you know, haven't done a lot since then. Mm -hmm. um, and, and screenwriting, I'm still trying to hack away. And so I have yet to complete <laughs> I know, and I'm putting this whole thing on. You'll get there. I'm gonna get there. <laughs> I am determined. It is. Um, it's my bucket list. It's like it's big on my bucket list. I'm like, I will complete a screenplay. Yes, but it, at least one. At <laughs> least one. Gosh darn it. <laughs> but I think my also my dad being a writer and a and a, and a prolific one at that. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's in my mind. I'm like, you know, he's the writer. He Does is that scare a, you? Yeah, I mean, to, it, to... absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it does. I didn't mean to cut you off there. It no, does because he is so disciplined. Mm -hmm. He is a man of discipline. He's, you know, up in the morning and he's he's doing some writing and I'm just reading the newspaper and doing his thing and going to work and, you know, so he he writes probably several times a day mm -hmm. or he's reading lectures and commenting and editing and um, and he's written so many books and so I asked him one time I said how do you do it, you know you're yeah. writing like about three books a year, <laughs> how do you do it? Yeah and 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 he had some really great advice and he said basically he's always sort of working on three projects at a time wow. um one he's sort of in the throes of writing um one he's maybe coming up with idea as he's writing something he's coming up with different ideas and he's sort of jotting those down mm -hmm. and, and outlining them and then another one is more or less complete he just has to go back and edit it hmm. so when he gets when his brain gets sort of taxed or tired of doing one working on one particular aspect he kind of switches. Yeah. So, huh. and I think that really works. He's got like an assembly line yeah. on his own, it's basically. Like his own little <laughs> assembly line. And it's like, okay, I'm tired of like, you know, thinking about this one particular thing. Okay, well, you know, let, I'll free up my brain to kind of like be more creative and just kind of float out there and I'll start, you know, jotting some notes down on Is this he other fiction piece. or nonfiction? Um, he, yeah, so he, he does philosophy. Okay. So, yeah, it's like, huh. yeah. <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and for me, I'm like, in philosophy, I'm like analysis paralysis. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like, I am a philosopher's daughter because I, I think a lot. I think, right. you know, maybe too much. Where I have a hard time like pulling the trigger and just going and doing. <laughs> so I'm, I'm learning in my later years to just, you know, kind of fail. And, and that was a big lesson for me this past year in Austin. Like every year, it seems like it's a different sort of takeaway. Mm-hmm. Um, but the past couple of years, it's just been literally you're going to suck. Mm. Like there's just no way around it. Right. Like your first script and your first pass at your first script, especially is really going to, you know, all the dialogue's going to sound the same. Right. It's going to seem petty or not dynamic <coughs> enough. And you just got to keep working at it mm-hmm. and keep going. And I think my fear of, of failure or, you know, my sort of, I have a pretty high standard for perfectionism. Mm-hmm. Um, prevents me uh from doing a lot of things and and so now i'm trying to get over that and actually let me tell you putting on this conference i'm (laughs) i've been very challenged lately (laughs) to just do it and get it done with and get it out the door and you know stop worrying so um so it's been kind of interesting that this whole creative process of even just you know whether it's it's focusing on a piece of art or writing or putting on a conference or a show or an event I mean, it's just there's so many different aspects to it. Mm -hmm. and So many moving parts. Many moving parts. (laughs) Yes. And you just got to chip away, chip away, chip away, and then kind of hope they all come together Mm -hmm. and then hope you end up with this beautiful, like, you know, symphony or piece at the end to say, okay, that, you know, that, that happened and I did that. Right now in this moment, how are you feeling about it? So right now in this moment, I am feeling, I'm feeling it's it's mixed. Mm-hmm. It's mixed. See, I'm feeling great about it because the people who are coming mm-hmm. are incredible. Okay. Yeah. So, so the programming is awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, and like, I, what are some of the things that are happening? Yeah. So, sure. So, um, so Friday we have this gentleman David Patterson who um, his mother Kathy wrote *A Bridge to Terabithia* and *The mm-hmm. Great Gilly Hopkins*, and so he has adapted her books to the screen so nice. there's we're definitely doing like an, a, a from novel to screen adaptations panel on that day and awesome um, mm-hmm. and there's something called iphone filmmaking which we're hoping to do as well oh. um j wade edwards who is an editor for adult swim uh-huh. so squ- ah, squid fun. billies and aqua teen hunger force and space goes coast to coast nice He's, aqua teen. <laughs> yeah i know right he's worked on all those shows and he's a really fun guy um, so that's that's pretty terrific. And then Saturday, Saturday I'm trying to do a little bit more of an indie filmmaking focus. Okay. And then Sunday is our big pitch competition. So people, if you buy your tickets from now till I think it's May 12th, yes, mm-hmm. May 12th. Okay. Um, you are eligible to be entered into the pitch competition. So. So what is the pitch competition? Yeah, so the pitch competition that, that we're doing is it's going to be very simple because it's year one. Mm-hmm. So instead of having like a screenplay contest where people have to submit screenplays, you got to get readers, whatever. Right. It's just literally like submit a log line. Submit your log line. And we're going to choose the best 10 log lines. Huh. And those people... And you can only you can only submit a log line if you actually have purchased a conference ticket. So uh-huh. it's it's like you got to be willing to like show right. up. Yeah, you know. <laughs> okay. So then and and we're gonna be announcing that Sunday morning at you know like nine in the morning. We're gonna say I know these poor people. <laughs> I'm dragging you out of bed on a Sunday. It'll be worth it. It'll totally be worth, worth it. it. <laughs> totally, totally. So um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have we're gonna announce who, who those ten log line winners are right then and there mm. and then they will have the opportunity to go into sort of like a separate room and pitch to uh, a panel of folks including alvaro rodriguez who wrote machete oh. yeah and um what a great opportunity i know i know <laughs> and kim waltrip who's an amazing producer and my friend um lisa minzy who's read hundreds of scripts for austin film festival's competition which is wow one of the top screenplay competitions in the world so these are people who really know their stuff yeah and then the top they'll choose like sort of the top three from those folks Mm -hmm. and then at sunday's closing session will be the finale Mm -hmm. and that'll be judged by sort of like another uh panel of three people who are producers and industry executive and industry exec and also um this gentleman 
Christopher Lockhart, who works for William Morris Endeavor Entertainment. Okay. That's the largest talent agency in the world. Yeah. And he reads scripts for, oh, he, he's been a reader for Matt Damon and Denzel Washington, um, Liam Neeson, oh, uh, the the film Taken. Yeah. Yeah. He like hooked Liam up with that huh. that role. The franchise. Yep. And and Rachel McAdams, I think, is one of his more recent clients. She was sort of stuck in these kind of romance roles. Yeah. She wanted something a little grittier. Yeah. So true detective yeah mm-hmm. you see, which i think worked well for her hopefully because yeah. I, I enjoyed seeing her in a role like that i yeah i did too i definitely did too and and i and i think i was one of those people that was like oh cute little girl yeah you know <laughs> you're not gonna pull this up come on you don't have me fooled you don't right. have me fooled but no no she can she can she can definitely act so, yeah. so i'm sorry rachel <laughs> um, so it does sound like you have like a lot oh, of like great so, programming and people so involved. much talent so much talent it's unbelievable i i actually feel horrible because i only have sort of i'm only sort of doing two seminars at any one given time uh-huh. so literally uh i, I feel like we could have 120 seminars, right. you know, <laughs> with all these folks, because I think a lot of them, too, are used to doing sort of lectures and, yeah. and talking just on their own. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, there's going to be a whole panel of you, like five or six people <laughs> oh, shoved wow. together, and everyone's going to have to, like, you know. It's year one, Kathy. It's year one. I know. So I know. you don't want to. I know. Spread yourself too thin. I know. Well, that's <laughs> it. I mean, I'm, I'm like, you know, if I did that, I, I'd be afraid that there would be, like, you know, five people in ten rooms. You know, right. it's just I want to keep everyone together right. and keep the energy really good. And then, and then if the masses do happen to come, I can open up another room and yeah. have another round of, you know, seminar sessions going on at the same time. But right now, it's I'm limiting it to sort of two at a time. Um, and we might do some, like, round additional roundtable stuff. Okay. So. So a good you plan. Can, yeah, so you can have sort of smaller groups talking four or five on one, you know, with folks and getting kind of different aspect or like really asking them, you know, talking to an editor, talking to a producer, mm-hmm. talking to um, an indie filmmaker who's been doing that for a long time and, and having just a lot, a large, larger mix and opportunity. It's just a lot of networking, yeah. I think. That's like one of the main reasons why I wanted to do something in Pittsburgh mm-hmm. and tap into my network that I developed in Austin is, you know, we have all these universities, we have all these colleges, we have yeah. all these indie filmmakers and people who are interested in in, in doing films. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you know, it's, it's like, of course people are going to want to come. Yeah. You know, the masses are just going to, they're just going to come flooding. <laughs> and, and, and now I'm like, okay, well, you know, it takes some time. It does. It does. What are the dates? The dates are May 20th, Friday, May 20th, mm-hmm. to Sunday, May 22nd. And Friday starts at around noon. Okay. So um, we're not doing programming in the morning. Some people said, oh, I can't get off of work. Right. and But I wanted to still do programming on Friday because other people were like, well, I don't want to get off my weekend. <laughs> 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 so I'm like, okay, trying to make everybody happy here. Yeah. But it's going to be exper- but But actually the programming on Friday is – phenomenal Mm -hmm. you know and i'm not doing programming light sunday afternoon okay you know some people are like oh you should end at three or end at two i'm like these people are in town they want (laughs) to talk and they want to share their knowledge and wealth and information with you so like yo i'm not doing that you know i really feel like if you're gonna yeah it's sure it's it's a it's a higher ticket price Mm -hmm. You know, some people want it for free. It's not free. Maybe you always get folks that want it for free. Yeah, I mean, it's not free. It takes a lot of money right. to fly folks in and put them up at, like, a nice hotel. Yeah. And that's the attraction is, is you know, we're not Austin. Right. So we got to roll out the red carpet here a little yeah. bit and, and make it appealing. Um, but, but definitely, I think what I've found, which is so interesting, is that folks who are willing to come and be part of something, mm. and there have been a lot of – People, I mean, I've even had to turn some folks away because I just I can't afford it. Yeah. I can't afford to bring every five everybody right. in. And um, I mean, I wish I could. I'm like, hey, well, you're w- welcome to come. And then they're like, no, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that should be like my self meeting like yeah. process, which yeah, is exactly. like, well, if you can pay for it, you can come. Yeah. And like, yeah, but I've had people who cash in on frequent flyer miles to be here. Nice. And I'm like, wow. That to me is just incredible. That's extremely giving. Like Very it. giving. Mm-hmm. And and David Patterson, he can only be here on Friday. Um, his wife 
he, he lives in New York City and his wife and it's going to be his birthday and she said you got to come back <laughs> you have to come back to New York City but he's he just really wanted to be part of something getting off the ground yeah and he's like I've been so lucky and so fortunate in my in my career and I feel like this is a way that I can give back yeah. so he's flying in on Thursday and he's flying out you know Friday in the evening and he's not gonna be around a party or anything uh-huh. he's just really coming in because he wants to share his his knowledge that's with people wonderful. and yeah so it's such a it's a really giving community and that's I think the part that has made me feel very humbled and um like well like I'm, I'm very grateful, mm-hmm. very humbled and grateful uh, because I don't know that if I had climbed my way to the top uh-huh. to get into a position like that, <laughs> if I would be so willing <laughs> and generous, real. <laughs> I'm keeping it real. I'm keeping it real. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, you, you got to ask yourself, like, right. you know, like, is this something that, cause it is, it's a competitive industry yeah. and, um, you know, so, so the, the fact that these, these folks are willing to do that, I'm like, wow, okay, that's great. It just goes to show, never hurts to pay forward. Right. And where is it going to be held? It's going to be held at the David L. Lawrence Convention Center downtown. And there's parking. Oh, yeah, there's parking. There's parking. parking. There is parking. There's a garage. It's not too bad. (laughs) It's not too bad. Um, How much are tickets? Mm. So pricing's all over the place. Okay. What do they start at? Where do we start? 30 for students and 60 for regular admission. So they're day passes, and then okay. there's like the full conference badge. Okay. Which I obviously recommend you buy the full conference badge. Obviously. Yeah. And wh- um, where? But, what? Where's the sure. website? So the website. Okay. So so just real quick. So Friday because it's only half day is a little bit cheaper. So it's like thirty for students. Saturday and Sunday it's forty five. Okay. Because it's we've got a few more sessions yes. thrown in. Yeah, it's a little stuff bit longer. A little bit longer. Um, and then and then uh, the the regular mission is twice that. So on. On Friday, it's 60 for regular mission, and then 90 uh, on Friday and Saturday. But, of course, if you purchase the conference badges, you're going to save Savings. some money. Save some money. <laughs> Come and hang out. All three the, days. All three days. It's going to be – and I'm really thinking, too, like, again, I just wanted to keep things simple year one, which mm. was, like – all or nothing. Right. In or <laughs> like, like, just keep it simple. I don't want to do, like, today's the green day, and then right. tomorrow's the purple day, and then it's the red day, you know? So I was like, but <laughs> but I had so many people say, well, you know, we might want to only come for one or can only come for one, and mm-hmm. so I capitulated. So, um, but, uh, but I think, you know, hopefully people will come on Friday. That is a sort of cheaper day, and, um, and then just see what it's like. I mean, a screenwriters conference, it's – it's interesting because it the it's a misnomer mm. because the word screen is turning off my writer friends and oh. the word writer is turning off my indie filmmaker friends. Really? Yeah. So it's kind of hard to, for me to explain. It covers everything. It encompasses yeah. everything. It's like I'm like the anthropologist. I'm the liberal arts person. It's like <laughs> it's all. It's everything. You'll find something for everybody. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Well, you can't have one without the – like you can't have – anything right. on screen if you don't have a writer really right. i mean so i mean so that's kind of a, something you should probably yeah you know you you your director your producer you are a cameraman you you, you want to make movies or whatever right you should probably go in there and um make some writer friends make some writer friends exactly <laughs> and and this would be a great place to do that because writing yes. is key people yes. it all starts with the script can't stress that enough but but also you know you're producing a horror movie it's like mm. well i don't know you just you gotta read the scripts. Yeah, there's no way around it. Right, the <laughs> unless you're gonna wing is it. your base. It, it really is. <laughs> Even it really if you is. have no dialogue, you still need the script. Yeah, exactly. And we also have a lot of um, folks who are playwrights. Mm-hmm. So they're screenwriters and playwrights yeah. and novelists. So we're hoping to do some, you know, sort of ad- adaptations and playwriting yeah. and, you know, like writing for the screen or, you know, how people's like stage backgrounds have helped them in film and that makes and vice sense. versa because, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of interchangeable. Don't be snobby. Don't be, snobby. Don't be snobby. Don't be a purist. <laughs> Go and make some, and spread your wings and make yeah. some connections and Absolutely. make some new friends and Absolutely. learn some stuff. It's going to be great. And there will be a party on Saturday night 
Um, also downtown. Nobody drinks like writers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is true. Almost had it at Wiggle Whiskey, but Wiggle's a little too small. I wanted, yeah. I wanted you know, more people coming out. So, um, so anyway, hopefully we won't end up in this big room with like, you know, 30 people. No, I don't think it's going to be like that. Um, Where's the party going to be? It's going to be in the Pierce Studio, which is in the Trust Arts Education Building. It's, it's, it's part of the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust. It's one oh, okay. of their buildings. Huh. Yeah, they like to keep things on lockdown. Wow. Yeah, they got they had the space gallery. It's right across from the yeah, space okay. gallery. Oh, okay. On the other side of the street. Huh. Um, sort of a couple buildings down from like the arcade nice. theater. And um, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, so it's sort of actually, it's kind of like in the basement. Nice. And, at, and at first, because I'm someone who, <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. So like in my mind, I'm like, we're going to party at the Andy Warhol Museum. And oh my God, it's going to be amazing. And we're going to take over the Hall Museum. And it's going to be like the thing in Pittsburgh. I'm going to be like Gatsby throwing on this amazing party. And everyone's going to want to come, including Daisy. You know? And, and now I'm like, okay, well, maybe in like year and 10. This basement's cool. Yes. Yeah, and I know. And, then, and I'm, like, I'm like inviting all these people to come to Pittsburgh and we're going to party in a basement. <laughs> and I'm like... That's going to stink. Oh, well. But it's, no, it's actually really cool. It's sort of like a two-story space. Okay. And it has a very film, because it's sort of yeah. black box, and there's a big screen in there. I'm hoping to show, oh, I should mention this now, mm-hmm. and to you. I would like to show films from local filmmakers. Oh, nice. I mean, the volume obviously won't right. be up. It's but not, we're not there to watch the films, but to have them. Right, to have them going, and at least spark conversation. Yeah. Um, from people, I mean, I'm a huge fan of um, Chris Prexta, who did the Mercury Men. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I just right. love, like, the sort of low-budget special yeah. effects and stuff. And so I think, you know, the fact that there will be producers, directors, execs, yeah. you know, all these folks so are in you the putting, room. Are you officially putting the call out now for... Putting the call out. This <laughs> is it. This is the official call out, people. <laughs> Talk to Camila or, you know, <laughs> so get some, get some uh, films, some locally shot Pittsburgh films, locally shot films. You know, we're not going to show the whole thing, but we'll show yes. like, you know, three minute clips. You have and, some visually interesting. Right. Give us some visually interesting scenes. We'll yes. put it on a reel and we'll show it throughout the night. Yes. And that would be awesome of you. And I would appreciate it. And also <laughs> hopefully awesome of me because when you're, <laughs> you're, you've made it big someday. Right. Hopefully you'll like <laughs> remember to thank me. Thank me. Uh, thank hand out, uh, <laughs> when I'm begging for change on the street. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, so, so that would be great. That's, that's the sort of vision that I would like to, to have happen. So, um, so well, I yeah. think it's going to be amazing. And thank um, you. Thank you so much. I'm excited to see what goes on. Thank you. Um, You're coming then? Yes, at least yeah. one day. Okay, I don't good. Know. I don't good, know good, good. Free, but, um, and actually, yeah, I should talk to you about being in on a panel or something. Hey, website. Where's the <laughs> website? <laughs> website. We're getting there. We're getting there. The chatty Cathy. Whoa. Reel me in. Reel me in. Um, three, the number three. Number three. Number three. Three R for River, S for Screenwriters conference spelled out which is nice yeah three yeah, rs perfect. conference okay. there's a lot of e's <laughs> <laughs> it's like c-o-n-f-e-r-e-n-c-e you guys know how to spell conference yeah um it's exactly. uh <laughs> you have a facebook page yeah too and i do have a facebook page so i would absolutely love it if people would like it like, that'd be great like it. like it and then please tell your friends because I think Facebook has changed their algorithms. Again. Yes. Yeah. So what happened is I started inviting all of my friends, mm-hmm. you know, everyone in England and California and wherever, uh-huh. um, not realizing I think they cut you off at 500 now. Yeah, I think that's what somebody else is right. telling me that. So I was, I was just, they were, you know, Facebook does this thing where they, they suggest people. And I was like, sure, 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 sure. And then I got down to like 35 and it's like, now remember, you only want to invite the people that are actually going to show because you only have 35 invites left. And I was like, no. I beg your pardon, Facebook. <laughs> and then I saw the button that was like, look at your friends in alphabetical order. Oh. So I'm like, I looked at the list and, and I'm like, oh man, there's so many people. I didn't even get to 
that personally sucks. but so i'm gonna i mean they're gonna have to you know like want to have a spare moment right? yeah i'm gonna have to sit down and start like tagging the hell yeah of all these people oh and you know come on come on please like my facebook. page please like my event <laughs> but Ugh. yeah i know facebook it's it's they want you to pay yeah that's, that's their, what it is that's their new jerks mo um what's the yeah. legacy that you want to leave behind oh legacy yeah. whoa that's an interesting <laughs> word whoa legacy what's the legacy can i can i have a sip of water sure to, to process that <laughs> take a dramatic pause drink some water <laughs> absolutely i gotta sound smart about this one need some time to think <laughs> mm. so legacy um well my what I, the legacy is i would like not to fall flat on my face and and That's have to one. leave pittsburgh on account of the fact that <laughs> She bombed <laughs> in a small town where it gets around. Uh. <laughs> so that's that's number one goal. Um, no, I'm sure it'd be fine. The legacy is I, I see myself more as sort of like a entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it would be really great to get some of these. I th I think one of the surprising things about putting this conference on was that certain people who are in the industry in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. maybe they're their professors or this that or the other like they don't like the left hand doesn't talk to the right hand right and so um getting people together really mm -hmm. um behind a common thread or what right. have you event um would be would be amazing and i think that would really strengthen mm -hmm. the industry here and the um the economics too, sort of okay. like you know, yeah. having an, an economic impact as well to say, hey, you know, when and, and, and maybe I'm just naive and I don't probably really know <laughs> a lot about how things are done, you know, but um, I think it'd be cool, for instance, to be like, hey, big time people who are coming here and, you know, shooting stuff right. like we appreciate you doing that, but at this and, and, and have our tax money. Like right. you know, we, we tax incentives, like we want you to have yes. that, but you also have to hire like a certain portion of people yeah. like from the city of Pittsburgh or something of that nature to, right. to fill a quota of local talent and not, I mean, I'm sure there's like unions and other things that are yeah. involved in that, that it gets a little, a little bit difficult. Um, but, but also I think one of the things that I wanted to, say is like look we're not some small rinky dink little town right we have so many colleges and universities we're highly educated educated right. a friend of mine once said you know when he comes back from la he's like you know i'm, I'm always going to these parties and there's so many phds and like <laughs> multiple people with multiple degrees in the right. room you know so um so you know just being like look we know we know what we're doing mm -hmm. and um we have some ideas to how things work yeah we're not clueless right. here um so yeah, let's let's sort of figure out a way that we can get our talent plugged in. Mm -hmm. And even if they're they're not going to move to L.A., that's fine. But really to say, look, you can do it. And I think this is the, the climate and the culture now is uh -huh. such that, um, you know, it's been proven that you don't necessarily have to move out to Los right. Angeles. It's, yeah, it's, and it's becoming much, much more apparent. And it's almost as if people are kind of avoiding la yeah these days in yeah. that sense it just seems really uh, it, la that was never um never appealed to me mm. it seemed really congested and just too many people i think it's really <laughs> a matter of what kind of a career you want to have yeah you know and so i mean going back to my my very wise father um he wrote a book on luck and the, the general premise is you know, luck is also about just putting yourself in situations where it's more likely the chance of you succeeding is more likely. Right. You know, kind of diminishing negative things mm -hmm. and accentuating positive right. things or, you know, being in a place that those ex types of experiences are more likely to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's part of luck. Um, so it's not just, oh, this is a lucky person. It's like, well, right. you got to put yourself out there, that kind of thing. And so L.A. in some ways is that or, or was that. I'm not sure if that's. I mean, there's a lot, there's a huge market out there. So, but I'm, I'm not sure that the job market is like how, how easy it is to break in, you right. know, whereas if you go right. to a smaller pond, yeah, you know, I mean, if you're talented and can get on with people, you know, it's like the sky's the limit. Right. Um, but LA, it's gotta be just so, uh, saturated, maybe yeah. saturated. Is, yeah. yeah. So I don't, I mean, again, 
I, I'm not out there. Um, I just sort of have friends out there, and mm. and um, and some of them are, you know, wish that they had moved out there sooner. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, whoa, because you know they they go to places and they're meeting all these people and and right. that kind of thing. But I think sometimes it's it's not a matter of just meeting folks. It's like really getting a chance to take a seat at the table. Yeah. So you know, in Pittsburgh, you can you can do that. You can create that table. Mm-hmm. You can build it. Yeah, absolutely. You can build the chair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you can sit in it. And you can call yes. yourself whenever you want, you know? Yeah, that's one um, of the things that I do li- love about, about Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you got to, you know, navigate from yeah. the, you know, everybody's made a chair, and now you got to navigate through the ones that chairs are actually right. worth something. Exactly, exactly, uh, exactly. What yeah. haven't you done yet that you really want to do? Okay, what haven't I? Well, definitely writing writing a screenplay. I I have a couple of ideas, and um, so that's definitely one thing that I really want to do. And um, and another thing that I really want to do, I oh, I want. Last year, Mm -hmm. I had a big birthday, and I really wanted to go to Hawaii and learn to surf. Oh, I mean, I think I'm gonna. I think it's gonna be horrible. (laughs) I think I'm gonna be in the water. I think you know, (laughs) ten, five, not even ten. I give myself two minutes. Two minutes in, I'll probably be regretting it. But I'm like. Wow. At least want to try. Try. I want to try. Some kind of water sport, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. I think I would really. Are really you a really strong like... swimmer? Not so much. <laughs> Not so much. No. I'm, I'm, I can sort of float. <laughs> I can swim. You're a daredevil. Not, 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 a, not a strong swimmer, no. So um, I think that was one of the criteria. In fact, uh, I, I read somewhere this woman who teaches like other women's, you know, surf, she mm. does surf camps with these women, and she's like, must not have a fear of the water. And I'm like, well, there goes that. <laughs> <laughs> but but I still kind of want to try it anyway. And then and then travel. Travel so great. Travel so good for the soul. Yeah. And. Um, and and really, I think, you know, the thing that that one of the reasons why I'm sort of attracted to, I think, you know, the screenwriting crowd and the filmmaking crowd is that I realize that these people are storytellers, mm-hmm. and that to me, and goes back to my anthropology, is so much about what life is, mm-hmm. sharing stories, creating stories, um, being able to relate to other people and other situations and conflicts or you know, whatever it may be that um, I'm sort of attracted to this kind of crowd of people that are interested in the human condition mm-hmm. and psyche. And um, and I think that's that's kind of what keeps bringing me back to to film no, and that's, filmmaking. That's, so. a good, that's a good reason. Yeah. Um, how do you take care of yourself? How do you make sure that Kathy is okay? Like, <laughs> <do> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, um, <laughs> that's well, no, so funny. I mean, just like me- not physically, mentally, right. um, emotionally. That's 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 great. I I think you know it's been interesting. I'm someone who I'm I'm a very sociable person, but I think I realized much later in life, growing up into cultures, that there is a certain amount of um, social anxiety mm. and phobia. Always sort of wondering. What do people expect of me? Um, what am I doing here? Mm-hmm. Uh, what what? How should I be behaving? Oxford is very proper. Yeah. Um, so um, so it's kind of interesting because I think as an adult I've been realizing oh that's anxiety mm-hmm. oh I get it um, and I think taking care of myself is just really I've been learning to like let go breathe and just say you know what my cat is still gonna like me at the end of the day <laughs> at the she's, very least at the least actually she's just gonna want me to feed her <laughs> but at least it's something uh no but seriously i i you know i look at life i think life is you know at times more than full and at times mm. seems more than empty and you know you yeah. just gotta learn that it's uh, a friend of mine put it really well when he said um the grass isn't always greener you know the, the grass is always brown you get to the other side and it's just as brown as it was on the side you left, you know, and it's like, okay, so, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, I'm always looking at and trying to figure out, like, where should I be? Where do I belong? Do mm. I, you know, do I belong in this culture with these people? Do I belong in that culture with those people? Da, 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 da. And it's like, no, you belong with you, mm. kind of like where you are right. and, and that's okay and, and, and things are going to be fine. So, um, yeah, so how do I take care of myself? I, uh, I like going for walks and breathing and just kind of 
chilling probably yeah. chilling kind of yes. reset hit reset button hit yourself. reset button yeah i uh i think i hit the reset button a lot at home um just kind of on the couch yeah i like that button <laughs> i like that button too <laughs> i like that button too yeah right, so. so what about you what do you to what take you? care of myself mm-hmm. um uh well, there's a lot of um chilling i i, I joke it's not even really a joke. This is mostly seriously, though. I say that uh, for the longest time, I've called myself a mental escape artist ah, because I, I may know this too. I um, hmm. I'm also I'm I'm very introverted. Uh, I, there's most often I would prefer not to be in crowds of people or or whatnot. I I can't. I'm an introvert. I'm an extroverted introvert. Yes, is what I am. Um, and I, I would I am. So very. Uh, oh, Camila, you were you're, you're my sister from another mother. I tell you what, I tell you what, I should have known that the minute I walked in your bathroom and saw the beautiful curtain in there, and I was like, oh, it reminds me of like wallpaper I had in my in my room when I was growing up. And, yes. And, and oh, so I yeah. can I can I love dive like in, I could get into my head. I'm into my head in my head yeah. a lot, um, and so the most the the biggest thing that I can do to take care of myself is when I'm exerting all this energy when I'm out being extroverted when mm-hmm. I'd rather not be I have to come back and you know be by myself be with my thoughts just kind of not talk not do anything exactly. just kind of sit and be there for like an hour so that's like the biggest thing that I do um to kind of check in to make yeah. sure I'm okay <laughs> it, it's so funny uh it, it, yeah, it was only probably a couple of years ago. I had a friend of mine say, Kathy, you don't have me fooled for one moment. You're the most extroverted introvert I know. <laughs> and I didn't even realize again. It's like I didn't I didn't realize like that was that was probably part of a large part of my social anxiety was yeah. that um, I love being around people and people being, you know, just kind of being around people gives me a certain energy. But mm-hmm. at the same time. uh you yeah, know, there I'm are like, times where it's like I'm in a situation and yeah. you're like, yeah, it's great. It's wonderful. It's awesome. And then when I'm done, I'm done. I'm, I'm like exhausted. Yeah, I'm just I'm like, I need to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I'm over it. Oh, it's, it's done. We're done here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we're a lot alike in a yeah. lot of ways. I love it. I love so it. we are going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and um, ask you a bunch of random questions. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> now I am intrigued. <laughs> Okay, so now it's time for your random questions. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, boy. Okay. What album can you listen to from beginning to end? Oh, so. So? So, Peter Gabriel's oh, So. Oh, okay. Mm, that I can listen to, like, <laughs> continuously. Um, are you usually late, early, or right on time? Oh, you can answer this one. <laughs> <laughs> I am usually late. Although uh, just today, my boyfriend tells me that he read an article that said something about late people are usually very optimistic. Yes, I read guess? that. I was, I've seen that too, and I and I kind of and I, I'm a, I'm guilty of being late a lot. And so yeah, I, I always okay. think of it that way too. Like yeah, I'm just I'm, that you know, makes sense. Like yeah. there's not gonna be any traffic, right? Yep. No, that's exactly what it is. Um, <laughs> your favorite pizza topping? Oh, it's a new one. Hamburger meats. Really? Yeah, I had never tried that until someone introduced me. My, huh. Yeah, um, <laughs> but 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 meat. I would just say, <laughs> just in general. Meat. Meat. Your favorite word? <laughs> my favorite word. Oh my goodness, I'm so blanking. My favorite word. Oh, I had one, and then just like. Oh. Can you come back to that. Okay. Come back to my favorite word. Uh, do you still own any cassette tapes? Cassette tapes, of course. <laughs> I am like, come on, I have like a whole milk crate of cassette tapes in my basement. <laughs> what was your first job? Oh, so what I like to say, actually my first job job, uh, I worked uh, in an architecture firm. Okay. I Drafting. They taught me how to draft. Wow. As, an, as part of an internship, and then I they hired me. How old were you? That was when I was, was in college. Was that in college? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Senior. Oh, uh, last last book you read? Oh, the last book that I read. Oh, yikes. I read so many articles all the time. I'm like, well, cause this should be easy. Um, last book that I read. Um, recently, I've read um, a lot of the James Baldwin. Okay. Um, and, uh, and his Giovanni's Room. Okay. Favorite song to sing? 
favorite song? <laughs> it's a show tune. I love show tunes in the shower. Okay, what is it? <laughs> oh, I mean, I'll sing. I'll sing like you know uh, stuff from you know uh, Sound of Music. I have confidence in the sunshine. <laughs> I have confidence in rain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, it's um, funny. <laughs> would you survive a zombie apocalypse? Oh, heck. Well, I don't think so. Really? I don't know. I, I, I like to think I would, but, uh, you know, outrunning those guys, I, I think I think I would definitely, the, um, the badass in me would definitely come out. I mean, I would definitely put up some... Yeah, fight. put up a fight. I would put up a fight for <laughs> sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, celebrity you would love to have dinner with? A uh, celebrity I would love. Um, back to Peter Gabriel. <laughs> um, back to Peter Gabriel, but also, um, ooh, my favorite chef, Gordon Ramsay. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a big Gordon Ramsay. That would be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that would be. <laughs> Do you know any jokes? I know really lame jokes. <laughs> I know we know a couple very, very rated G jokes because okay. I used to um, help out at like summer camps. Okay. And so one of my favorite, you want to hear my favorite? Sure. What do you call a girl standing in the middle of a tennis court? What? A net. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so silly, but it's so funny. It's right. Like, it's so funny. Right? It's of like, course. A net. Of course. <laughs> So I know I'm lame. I'm not a I'm not a great stand up comedian by any means. <laughs> Do you believe in ghosts? Oh, oh, not pers- not really. Sort like sort of, mm-hmm. sort of. I believe in the supernatural, but okay. but not ghosts. Okay. What's your favorite part of the human face and why? Oh, I do like eyes. Okay. I like eyes. I feel like again, like they're the window to the soul. Yes. <laughs> mm, so I like eyes. Do you talk to yourself? Oh, yes. <laughs> In a British accent. <laughs> and that's my next question. Can you do any accents? <laughs> oh, there you go. Yes, I can. I can do like, 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 you know, uh, I don't know. I'm like, I can do like, you know, posh, like kind of posh girl posh, stuff. Like, uh, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, let's go down to the, you know, I mean, where do you want to go tonight? Anywhere you want to go is fine, you know. I or then like, like really posh British, like. Yeah, so I was just having tea the other day <laughs> with Jacqueline. I was just saying. It's <laughs> funny you should say that because I I do talk to myself and I also do it in a British accent. It's so <laughs> funny. I think I think what it is is that that was my, uh, you know, if, if I had learned a different language, mm-hmm. you know, how some people think in another language. Right. Me, it's just in another accent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. It makes sense. Can you drive a stick? Yes, not very well, but I can. <laughs> Do you remember your dreams? Oh, yes, every night. Really? Yeah, oh yeah, every night, every time I sleep. Wow, that's. Awesome. I know it's really well. It's kind of well, like it could tiring. <laughs> it does suck a lot. <laughs> uh, coffee yeah. or tea? Oh, oh, I like co- the taste of coffee, okay. but it really messes with me. So <laughs> tea is my what I should Your be go-to. drinking. Mm. Do you like clowns? No. If you could have any supernatural, if if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Mm, superpower. Um, I do like. I think being invisible would be pretty cool. I, that's the one I would always pick too. Yeah. Like, not only could you. Oh, you could do so much. You, so much. So much. Like you could. Yes. You could find out what people really think oh, about yeah. you. You could travel for free. You, you, you could, could be like pretend like you're the smartest person in the world because right. you can like find stuff out and nobody has any idea exactly. how you know that or you know <laughs> yeah it's great. Uh, have you ever solved a Rubik's cube? Yes, but not really well. Like it wasn't like I don't think it was as tangled. Okay. You know I don't think it was as tangled. It was like it already. Kinda, it was sort of yeah already there. I was on route. <laughs> you never get tired of blank. Oh, um, I never get tired of, um, well, chilling. I never get, <laughs> I never get tired of chilling. Um, no, I never get tired of, I love, I love being out, out in the pool. Okay. I like swimming. Well, not swimming, but hanging in the pool, being in water, being yeah. outdoors. Yeah. That's, that's I fun. Like water. I like water. Uh, yes. did you, um, if I gave you a plane ticket to go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Oh, New Zealand. Ooh. Have you ever been? No, but I hear it's amazing. Are you proud of yourself? 
Am I proud of myself? Um, wow. Yeah, <laughs> I am proud of myself. I think it's taken me a long time to say that I'm proud of myself. Good. But I think it's journey well, well spent. And describe yourself in one word. Mm. Uh, gosh. I don't, I'm like, you know, it's like caring, compassionate, sometimes to a fault. So, yeah. you know, it can be a good thing and a bad thing. You know yeah. what I mean? So, but I would say I'm a pretty, I like to think I'm a pretty, in general, sort of caring individual. That's our time, Kathy. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you for having me on thanks your for show. Coming. Thank you. Thanks for spending this time with me. Yeah, this is, this is great. And it's insightful. Insightful. Yes. Like, yes. I, like, about myself and about, you know, just things in general. So I really appreciate it. Thank yep. you. Oh, you're welcome. welcome. And um, once again, your website where folks can find. Absolutely. 3rsconference.com. Mm -hmm. And um, Three Rivers Conference on Facebook. And Three for Rivers Screenwriters Conference Three on Rivers Screenwriters Facebook, Conference. May right. 20th to 22nd. Awesome. And um, once Thank again, you. and always you guys can follow me on Twitter at the underscore Rugged Angel or go to RuggedAngel.com for back episodes. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. And remember, guys, whatever you do, do it with passion or not at all.